In this video, we will review the process of drawing blood from the cephalic vein, or venipuncture. Venipuncture, the process of drawing blood from a vein, can be done in the dog using the cephalic, jugular, or lateral saphenous veins. In this video, we're going to review drawing a blood from the cephalic vein. There are nine steps to performing cephalic venipuncture. The first step is to ask the handler to occlude the vessel, and then palpate the limb to assess the vessel location. Step two is to wet the venipuncture site with alcohol. If the vessel is not visible or palpable, don't hesitate to clip hair from the venipuncture site. Step three is to choose the appropriate size needle and syringe and inspect them for flaws. Step four is to move the plunger back and forth to break the seal on the syringe and also to break the seal on the needle cap. Step five, we hold the limb of the carpal area with a non-dominant hand and palpate the vessel with the dominant hand. The carpal area is the dog's wrist. In step six, you'll place the thumb of the non-dominant hand, the one that's holding the wrist, along the vessel length to stabilize the vessel during venipuncture. Step seven, while holding the syringe barrel, you'll insert the needle bevel up at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the limb through the skin. The exact angle is going to be dependent on the thickness of the skin. The bevel refers to the angled edge of the needle. Step eight, keeping the barrel of the syringe stabilized, you'll aspirate blood into the syringe with the dominant hand by gently withdrawing the plunger. And step nine, release occlusion on the vessel prior to needle removal and apply pressure over the venipuncture site with non-dominant hand as the needle is removed. Let's go through these steps individually. Step one, ask the handler to restrain the dog and occlude the vessel. Here we can see Abby restraining this dog. She's got her arm across the dog's neck, much like a dog in lateral recumbency, in order to keep the head from being able to flip around or go to the side. If we look closely, we can see she has her chin close to the dog's head. And this is important so that if the dog were to throw its head upward, it's not going to be able to whack her into the chin. Once she's got that well restrained, then she is going to go ahead and take the thumb of her other hand and use the bottom of her hand to extend the elbow, as we can see here, and then take her thumb across the crook of the elbow to occlude the vessel. It's always important to remember safety first. If you have a dog that is untrustworthy, it's always okay to put a muzzle on the dog before proceeding, as we can see here. The second part of step one is to palpate the limb to assess the vessel location. So here we can see Abby again extending the limb and then putting her thumb across the inside of the elbow to occlude the vessel. Now the student is taking her dominant hand and she is feeling for the vessel as it runs along the top of the forearm. Here you can see her fingers wrapped around the wrist of the dog and her thumb is extended along the length of the forearm to stabilize the vessel. She's now going to wet the site with alcohol. This will help the vessel stand out a little more and also make it easier to palpate. If you can't see or palpate the vessel, it's okay to go ahead and clip the venipuncture site. Do be careful if you're working with a show dog to make sure the owner's given you permission before doing this. Step three, we're going to choose an appropriate size needle and syringe for the vessel in question and inspect it for flaws. For most dogs, the appropriate size syringe will be a 3cc syringe, as we can see here, and the needle would be either a 22 gauge needle or potentially a 20 gauge needle probably a 22 gauge needle would be a better choice. She's going ahead and taking the syringe out of the case and putting the needle on it to go ahead and inspect it carefully and make sure that there's no defects in either part. You can see her already beginning step four, which is going to be to move the plunger back and forth to break the seal on the syringe. This is really important. Failure to break the seal on the syringe can mean that you're going to have an extreme influx of pressure when you pull back on that plunger, causing blowing of the vein. She also did go ahead and break the seal on the cap to make it easier to get the cap off of the needle when she's ready to use it. Step five, now that she's got that done, she's gonna go ahead and hold the limb at the carpal area, or wrist, again, with her non-dominant hand, and once again, palpate the vessel with her dominant hand to make sure she's really happy with how it feels and with the pressure that's being applied up here. It is really important to go ahead and place the thumb of the non-dominant hand along the vessel length to stabilize the vessel during venipuncture. We can see that right here, how she's extending her thumb all the way along the forearm to hold that vessel in place. Because of the anatomy of the dog, this vessel can wiggle side to side, and so it is really important to make sure not to forget this important step of keeping that vessel in place. 
Now, holding the syringe barrel in her dominant hand, she's going to insert the needle bevel up or slanty side up at a 15 to 30 degree angle through the skin. So you can see the slanty edge of the needle there, and she's inserting right through the skin at about a 15 degree angle, and then flattening out once she's through the skin in order to best enter the vessel. While keeping the barrel of the syringe stabilized, we're then going to aspirate blood into the syringe with the dominant hand by gently withdrawing the plunger. Here we can see Shanna doing that in this case. She's pulling back gently on the plunger. You can see her thumb stabilizing the vessel and now the syringe as she blows the blood into the syringe. And finally, you'll instruct the handler to release occlusion on the vessel prior to needle removal, and then either you or the handler should apply pressure over the venipuncture site with a non-dominant hand as the needle is removed. Although in this video, we will see that the handler is applying pressure to the venipuncture site, generally I recommend that the person who is drawing the blood apply the pressure, that way there's no risk of anyone getting stuck with the needle. That's it, those are all of the steps involved in drawing blood from the cephalic vein. Let's review them one more time. Step one, ask the handler to occlude the vessel and then palpate the forelimb to assess vessel location. Always remember safety first. The handler should be holding the dog with her arm across the dog's neck and her head or chin against the dog's head so that if the head is thrown upward, it does not injure the handler. The other hand is used to extend the forelimb and then pressure is applied across the inside of the elbow to allow the vessel to stand out. Step two, wet the venipuncture site with alcohol. If the vessel is not visible with alcohol and cannot be palpated, go ahead and clip hair to make sure that you're going to have a good clean stick. Step three, choose the appropriate size needle and syringe and inspect them for flaws. Step four, move the plunger back and forth to break the seal on the syringe. It's also a good idea to go ahead and break the seal on the needle so that you will be able to easily get it out of the cap. Step five, holding the limb at the carpal or wrist area with the non-dominant hand, palpate the vessel with the dominant hand. Step six, Place the thumb of the non-dominant hand along the vessel length to stabilize the vessel during venipuncture. This keeps the vessel from moving side to side away from the needle. Step seven, holding the syringe barrel with the dominant hand, insert the needle bevel side up at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the limb through the skin, and then even it out flat while advancing into the vein. Step eight, Keeping the barrel of the syringe stabilized, aspirate blood into the syringe with the dominant hand by gently withdrawing the plunger. Finally, step nine, instruct the handler to release occlusion on the vessel prior to needle removal, and then you should apply pressure over the venipuncture site with the non-dominant hand as the needle is removed. Now it's your turn.